the feature we were looking for that wreck was able to lay mines. As we come down there, the five mine tubes, and one of the tubes is popped open, the hatch is opened up, and there's the top of one of the giant, you know, underwater mines. And our anchor was a big kind of steel anchor, and it's banging away on the side of the mine tube. Welcome back, Wreck Watchers. Today we have a very special guest on our Sunken Live series, the man, the legend, Warren Fletcher. Thanks for watching. Uh, I said the man and the legend, and it's true. We have Warren Fletcher. <laughs> Warren, I've known you since, uh, since well, I guess we were kids. Yeah, gosh, I can't even remember when we really met. We're so young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we come from, from the same place, yeah. Port Dover, Ontario. Doing the old Atlantic video. Helping your dad out with various things and projects. And, and then you ended up being one of the key divers on the Sea Hunters, the Dive yes. Detectives. You've done underwater camera work all over the world for a variety of productions. Yeah, so I'm serious when I say the legend. You know, in my mind, you've been a legend for a long time. I suppose, I don't think of myself that way, I guess. Uh, growing up, you know, in the country and uh, never had satellite, I never watched my own shows. You never watched, well, <laughs> I never heard, you ever watched my own show. That's a legend right it's there. It's kind of yeah. funny, yeah. yeah. You have traveled to more places than I think anybody I know. And yeah. you've gone and done things that most people will never ever get to do. No, a lot of non-touristy places that mm -hmm. we used to go, you know, chasing historical shipwrecks, you go where the, where the action is. Yeah. So a lot of these wrecks were in really treacherous water, really hard to get to places, no tourist infrastructure. Right. Just load everything up and try and figure it out when you get there. You're, yeah. And you're a commercial diver as well. So on the commercial side, the construction, what kind of stuff have yeah. you done? For a long time, I split my time really between film and commercial diving. Mm -hmm. I would call myself a, an underwater zebra muscle assassin. <laughs> Basically, a lot of our work was pressure washing, blasting and cleaning zebra mussels out of pipelines, uh, big water intakes, you know, different mm -hmm. infrastructure projects. Those zebra mussels get in there, they grow they plug up pipes and machinery and stuff so we'd get in there and pressure washers scrapers big suction dredges and that was a lot of it but mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot of uh, construction doing concrete forms building bridges ship repair salvage we did some really heavy duty salvage operations uh, you just never really knew what you were going to be doing yeah. from day to day and yeah that was one of the things i really loved the most about that job was you know show up figure out what the job is you know something's broke get in there figure out what's broke figure yeah. out how to fix it there's no procedure, there's no instruction manual. Yeah. <laughs> Just get in there and, you know, usually with a hammer and never the appropriate tools that you need, you know, just get in right. and figure it out. So some of the biggest adventures you have were never even filmed. No, yeah. no, you know, swimming 500 feet up a tiny little pipeline or something in the black. Oh, wow. Oftentimes the water's stirred up, you know, construction sites, the water's always poor, poor visibility. When I say poor visibility, I'm talking like, imagine turning out the lights, you know, okay, your TV isn't working. Yep. Go, go in the dark and grope around, figure out which cable came on, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not something that you've ever even seen before. So you got to right. get in there and, okay, yeah. well, this is part of a valve and this is a pipe here. <laughs> and try and figure out what you're even touching, right? And you're doing this willingly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. For not much money either. Yeah, you know? exactly. yeah that's really yeah. not nearly the money you'd expect that you'd get paid for that kind of job. But, yeah, uh, that was surprising when, uh, yeah. when I was, uh, yeah. you told me that before and I've seen some of that and that, that's crazy. Yeah. That's... It was super competitive. Um, mm -hmm. When the union came in, the wages went up an awful lot. Um, but yeah, the first 15 or so, 18 years of my career, it yeah. was not an easy go. You had to do it because you loved it. And, yep. you know, and I did, I, I absolutely loved doing that job. And, you know, I made enough money to get by, but yeah. you know, I wasn't buying a brand new car every no, year. That's no, for sure. yeah. <laughs> your career, your entire career has been underwater, but also you have not only a family history, but your own personal history with a lot of shipwrecks. Sure. Yeah. My father, Mike Fletcher is a very world renowned shipwreck hunter and discoverer. Mm -hmm. I've been involved in uh, multiple, gosh, I wouldn't even want to count how many shipwrecks we've found as a group over yeah. the years. Some pretty incredible shipwrecks too, you know, like uh, as far as I know, the only German U-boat ever discovered within Canada. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was a really pretty interesting wreck and a couple different submarines, a couple pretty high profile wrecks. <laughs> Talk about some of your favorites. Was the German U-boat, was that one of the uh, the highlights of your career? Um, definitely one of the most difficult and challenging dives that we ever did yeah. was, gosh, I want to say 400 miles offshore right. out on the East Coast near the border between America and Canada. Okay. Um, really deep water, 280 feet, I believe it was to the bottom, just treacherous, poor visibility, really tough, like high current, mm -hmm. uh, unpredictable current from wow. the tides, you know, and you're out there 
there's like roaming great white sharks that have probably never <laughs> seen people. Yeah. You know, these sharks don't know that we taste terrible. So they might just actually take a nibble to see yeah. what it tastes like. Yeah. That was actually kind of scary being out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing that uh, we managed to pull off a lot of those dives and not lose anybody. Or and How did you locate this sub? So that wreck, pretty interesting, really. When we go to look for shipwrecks, obviously research is the the key. You know, you got to know you start on more land, or less where to start looking. Yeah, yeah. you mm -hmm. go to the archives, you read as much historical information, as many files, and as many different points of view as you can um, to try and narrow down a location. And then the first thing we would do, we would go and show up, and we would go right to the fishermen's. You know, wherever the fishermen were at the wharf, mm -hmm. uh, commercial fishermen are the best usually. But even the guys that are out there just fishing with a rod and reel usually know where the piles of rocks are or where right. the shipwrecks are because that's where the fish are you know it's amazing that more stuff hasn't been found because the amount mm. of ocean floor mapping that has been going on for decades you would right. think that everything should be out there but a lot of times with the mapping you get this data you get these anomalies but you know hundreds of thousands of miles of ocean floor to explore millions of, of miles of the ocean floor to explore who has the time to go through all of these charts and all of this data and how do you recognize because sometimes it's just you know blob or, or <laughs> yeah. blip yeah how do you how do you yeah. interpret that well and some sea floors are really rocky some have like pinnacles of rock that shoot straight up some will be giant boulder fields mm -hmm. or some bottoms will be perfectly flat and then there will just be one huge pile of rocks for whatever reason yeah and those are the kind of things that, you know, might look like a shipwreck in those surveys. Um, and definitely, I know there are people now writing algorithms and some of the AI is coming in. Yeah. And they're taking the survey data and they're plugging it into a, an algorithm that can look for the hot spots. Yeah. When you first went out to check the target uh, for the German U-boat, how surprising was it to you when you actually dove on it and saw it with your own eyes? Like, right. were, were you like, oh, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm expecting this, or was it like, wow, this is this is real? Well, there was a real buildup to it. Okay. Um, it was, like I said, 280 feet to the bottom, I believe. So deep trimix, um, yeah. you know, obviously mixed gas range. We had a large vessel because we're miles, hundreds of miles offshore. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, I want to say, a 100, 120 foot troller that we yeah. were living on out offshore. Too big of a liveaboard ship to anchor into the wreck. You know, we don't want to damage historically significant shipwrecks. That's, you know, that's why we're there it's to preserve upon. history. Yep. So we would put the anchor as close as we felt comfortable to the wreck. But when we went down the first couple of times, we weren't on the wreck right. the first time. The second dive, you know, and it's a lot of work just to just to get geared up and go down to yeah. that kind of depth and yep. then to do your decompression coming back up. So, so yeah, we went down, no wreck. And that kind of depth, you're not going to go swimming off into oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> um, we went down again and we were at the stern of the vessel, but no discernible features at that point. We knew we were on a submarine. So I believe it was the fourth dive. We put another anchor down in a different location. The feature we were looking for, that wreck was able to lay mines. So okay. it had five mine tubes laid out in the center and only a few U-boats were ever built that way. Right. And we go down the line and there, as we come down, there are the five mine tubes and one of the tubes is popped open. The hatch is opened up and there's the top <laughs> of one of the giant, you know, underwater mines yeah. with all the springs and switches and <laughs> still, still, still active. Right? Well, it was all coming apart, yeah. actually. Oh, it wow. had all corroded apart. Yeah. And our anchor was a big kind of steel anchor and it's banging away <laughs> on the side <laughs> of the mine tube. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty exciting. I got to say that, uh, yeah. that dive there. So. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, uh, a little bit of an eye opener, a little bit sketchy, but uh, you know, hey, we we proved what we were looking for. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, it was, a, it was a, a success, but a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, nothing worth doing is ever uh, easy or not scary, right? A lot of people dive wrecks, <clears throat> but it's a really small amount of people that actually find wrecks. Sure, and you have yeah. had a lot of experience doing <clears throat> that. Is there a wreck that you found that, whether for TV or not, uh, that has stood out in your mind as part of you know a high point of your career? Yeah, well, definitely the uh, there's a few of the submarines that we've discovered over mm -hmm. the years. Uh, the Flyer. Okay. It was an American World War II sub. Yeah. Um, we found that out uh, in the Philippines in the Zulu Sea, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. uh, again, deep water, hundred meters. It was wow. three hundred and thirty feet down. Yeah. The, stunning beautiful clarity there's a possibility that someone had dove that wreck before us okay. we, we do know that there was a tech diver in that area mm -hmm. and we did find a rope 
wrapped up in the wreck. We couldn't find okay. that there was a rope tied to it. So mm -hmm. we don't know if it was a derelict drift, buoy line. It drifted in or something. It's possible. There, yeah. there are a ton of fish on that wreck. Wow. So the locals, I'm sure, have fished it heavily. It may, may have yeah. been an old anchor line or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the thing about discovering shipwrecks. You know, someone was obviously on it when it sank. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Uh, many, many times shipwrecks have been discovered multiple times over mm -hmm. the years. Um, a lot of people are very cagey and quiet when they do find a shipwreck. So, yeah. you know, they can be forgotten. They're discovered and then forgotten. So yeah, discovered yeah. and forgotten or lost, kept secret found, or found again. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and you, you know, there will be telltale signs. If you see obviously a line tied off mm -hmm. or when you start seeing a lot of rope on a, a shipwreck, it's a good indicator that there's been divers there, but it, it's really tough to tell sometimes. Yeah. And people are very secretive when they discover certain shipwrecks. Yeah, well, I know that your dad has said it to us many times, but shipwrecks make people crazy. <laughs> and it, it is true, it really is true, yeah. 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 yeah, unless you start out crazy and then it might make you sane. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's worked for you guys, I don't know. <laughs> Almost like what I was saying before, you know, people have this idea in their head, they wanna find something, they're obsessed, they do get obsessed with it. And then when people do find it, it's like they wanna, they want to possess they, it. They want to own it and yes. they want it to be theirs and they want it yeah. to just be theirs. I'm very opposite. When I find a shipwreck, you know, once we discover it and, yeah. and we get a chance to film it and, you know, identify it properly, I'm more than happy to share yeah. wreck locations. Um, you know, there are some Hamilton Scourge, let's say, okay. or, or yeah. like, you know, now the Erebus and Terror, not that I have the location for them, <laughs> but if I did, that's not one I would yeah. share because they're just so culturally significant Yes, and just easy pickings. You yeah. know, unfortunately people do still steal things off shipwrecks. So that's true. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to protect the history, but then the history has to be there for everyone to enjoy too. So it's finding that kind of balancing act, I guess, of, you know, given out enough information that people can go and enjoy it and not exploit the resource that we have. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right, that's good. Well, Warren, I really appreciate you taking the time. I kind of sprung this on you uh, <laughs> today, so last minute, I'm like, hey, well, well, we should do, we should talk with you, which we've been planning on doing. Sure. And yeah. I, I cornered you because you were here. So, so <laughs> thanks for being willing to, yeah. uh, to do this today. And, sure. uh, you know, make sure you keep watching this channel because Warren and I actually are talking about doing uh, some stuff on our own and we're gonna be putting on Rec Watch. So there's a lot of very cool, exciting things coming out. Thanks for watching. And remember, like, subscribe, notifications, and deep down, we care.